IndyCar Racing 2 is one of my favorite sims of all time, released back in 1995 by Papyrus, the same group that makes iRacing today. It's really one of the last uh, true IndyCar sims with the full season, full tracks, and everything like that. I started a few months back streaming my 1989 season as I raced through the whole series, uh, and I've been getting a lot of questions about how I make the game work, how I install it on a Windows 10 computer, how I get modern controls working. And so I thought I'd try to put together a quick video, uh, hopefully a somewhat comprehensive setup guide on how to get IndyCar Racing 2 working on Windows 10 with modern controls and everything. I'll try to cover everything I know, but as is the nature with a video like this, there's probably some hardware or software configuration out there that this won't cover. So the number one thing I could recommend is go join the forums at icr2.net. I'll put the link uh, in the description. There's a lot of other cool stuff there as well, uh, but post there if you've got issues, maybe post in the comments of the video. Uh, I'm sure some folks will jump in to help out, but this is not the easiest game to get running. It's not one download and double click something. Uh, you got to install a couple different programs, DOSBox and everything, but I'll go through step-by-step step how, how I do that and hopefully you can do the same. So the first step is getting the game. And IndyCar Racing 2, like I said, came out in 1995. I uh, had a few releases with I think the last one being in 1996. So it's over 25 years old at this point. And you can go on eBay if you want. There's boxed and just CD copies on there for less than $20. But the game itself is available online and I think it's legal to download, at least I'm hoping so. Uh, I'm gonna link the archive.org link to the game. There's several different websites out there that you can get copies of it. Some of them already have some mods and things installed, but I'd highly recommend just going with a fresh vanilla copy of it. And the link at archive.org actually has kind of a right off the CD fresh install of the game. Um, and so if you come to the site and you look down, I believe you can just download the zip file here. There's also a bunch of other files on here if you go to show all. Uh, but what you want is the IndyCar Racing 2 1996.zip file. That's a, it's a pretty large file, but it's gonna contain a couple things. The game itself uh, already basically unzipped, uh, but also an image of the CD. So you really have all the raw files. It is the 1996 version and it's version 1.01. Uh, and there's a little patch we're gonna patch the game with as well. But this game itself actually would work just as is. Um, so download this. And once you do download the file, it'll come in a zip directory, so you can unzip that. I've got 7-zip, but you should be able to use Windows default unarchiving utility. Um, and this is going to come with a bunch of files in it, this zip file. But inside, uh, we've got an indie folder. We've got two main folders. We've got a CD, which this is the actual CD, so you could kind of go through the DOS install process this way. Or the ICR2 directory. This is actually the game. So the game's already installed here, uh, and you'll be able to actually just use the game from this directory. So what I'd encourage doing is taking this uh, and putting it wherever you want your game to be on your drive. I've set up a folder for it just on my D drive um, called IndyCar Racing 2 and I'm actually going to paste here so it goes right in that folder. So this has ended up right in the D drive IndyCar Racing 2 directory. You can really call this whatever you want, but I would keep the name uh, less than eight characters and not make the path too long. Uh, this is a DOS game, so you can't just click right on the IndyCar EXE. Actually, if we do that, it's gonna say here, this app can't run on your PC. I'm running on a 64-bit version of, of Windows 10. So uh, we actually have to use a DOS emulator to get this working. And uh, you're gonna need things like short paths and directories to actually make that work. So generally recommend you can install it on your C drive or any hard drive you have, uh, but don't put it too deep in the directories and uh, also make sure the path name is, is pretty short. So now that you've got a version of the game, you need an emulator to run it. And DOSBox has been the long standard in DOS emulation. You can use regular DOSBox. If you already have DOSBox installed to do other stuff, absolutely can fire that up. Uh, but there is this alternate version, a forked version of DOSBox called the Enhanced Community Edition, ECE. This version of DOSBox has a bunch of other features, but one of the nice ones is to have a more precise joystick control. And that's gonna come in handy a lot for using a modern steering wheel in IndyCar 2. So highly recommend 
getting the ECE version. I think it also runs a little faster uh, than the normal DOS box, which IndyCar 2, if you get a lot of mods and things going in it and are at the back of the pack at Indianapolis, it actually pushes DOS box pretty much to the limit. So you will want DOS box optimized completely to run this game, uh, especially with any of the high quality car set mods. And DOS box ECE, from what I've found, runs the game the best. So I'll put the link for the site in the description as well. Uh, and it's a little tricky to find the download link here, but at the very bottom, uh, you can go to the Google Drive folder and there's a bunch of versions of DOSBox ECE. I actually have a really uh, much older version than what's listed here, but I would go ahead and download the DOSBox ECE 4465. If you happen to find this video much later, uh, make sure you don't download the regular DOSBox version since that won't have the enhanced controller support that we're looking for. Um, and so make sure the download you have is the ECE version. Uh, you probably won't want the Linux version, at least not with this install guide or the source. And so just grab the latest uh, non-Linux version of the DOSBox ECE. And so once you have that downloaded, uh, you will need to unzip it and it uses seven zips. So if you don't have seven zip, you will need to grab that, but we'll extract the folder. Uh, and this doesn't require an install or anything. If I double click into our DOSBox folder, you've got everything you will need to run DOSBox here. So you can actually put this anywhere you want on your computer. But for the sake of this guide, I'm gonna pretend like you just wanna run IndyCar Racing 2. So what I'd recommend is taking this DOSBox ECE folder and putting it right in the same folder that you have IndyCar Racing 2 in. So you'll have it right alongside the rest of the game files. So once you get that in place, we need to generate a config file for DOSBox. So if you double click on your DOSBox and then double click the DOSBox EXE, that'll actually open up DOSBox and it'll look something like this. Uh, if you've never used DOS before, no shame in that, you gotta learn sometime. It might look a little foreign or even a bit scary, but all you're doing is emulating an old computer as if your computer was running another computer inside of it. So this will be perfect for IndyCar 2. We'll be able to set it up like it's a computer from 1995 and run the game as it was meant to be played. For now, all you need to type is exit to exit out of DOSBox. We just wanted to start it up so that we get a config file generated. The config file is going to let us set settings so that we can make IndyCar Racing 2 operate exactly like we want and also make it easier to launch. So to get to the config file, and this is a little bit confusing, if you click on the path bar and type in percent uh, local app data and then another percent sign and hit, hit enter, that should bring you to your local data folder where you'll have a bunch of different folders, but hopefully a DOSBox one if you start a DOSBox for the first time. And if you click in here, you should have a DOSBox ECE config file. If you don't have either of those things, make sure you start a DOSBox uh, for the first time. I will also post a link to download this raw config file from my computer, as well as the one we're actually gonna set up. Uh, but it's probably best if you use the one that was generated so that there's no settings that won't match with your computer. What you wanna do with this file is copy this out and go back to your directory where you have IndyCar Racing 2 and paste that file in here. We're gonna use this DOSBox config to do all our config settings in so that we don't touch the normal one. And I guess you could run another game with DOSBox ECE if you wanted to and, and have its own configuration. Next part in the DOSBox ECE folder, we actually just want to make a shortcut for the DOSBox EXE file. Uh, so if I create a shortcut here, this will be uh, just a little bit easier to run the game with the config and everything. So we'll cut that and go back to our IndyCar Racing 2 directory and paste that in here. You can actually put this shortcut wherever you want. So if you want to put it on your desktop or whatever folder you use for all this stuff, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to remove all the stuff on the end of it. So I have just a DOSBox shortcut. Now we need to tell this shortcut to use this config file. And so if we right click our shortcut and go to properties, this will bring up the path. So this is telling us where we're launching DOSBox from. Um, what we wanna insert is quite a lot of stuff. So we, what we wanna do is put a space and then hyphen C-O-N-F. So it's telling us we wanna use a config file. And then we need to put the path and everything for that config. So if I do another space, I'm putting this config, uh, it's on my D drive. Yours might be C drive or depending on where you install it. So do D slash, uh, and I just have this in the IndyCar Racing 2 folder, slash, and then you need to put the name of the config file itself. So mine is uh, dosbox-ece.conf. So obviously there's a lot of typing and everything. You want to make sure you do it accurately and everything or else none of this will work. But if you've got the path to DOSBox inside of quotes uh, and then you've got conf and then you've got your path to your configuration and hit apply, that should work. Now, if we double click on this DOSBox shortcut, we'll be launching DOSBox. I'll drag the window over. We'll be launching DOSBox from that config. 
It's not doing anything yet, but you'll see in a second that this becomes really important. So we have to open up our config file. You might be able to just double click it to get it to open up, or you can go open with. Anything like a notepad should work. I usually use Sublime Text, but just to make sure it's gonna look the same for everybody, I'll use notepad itself here. Uh, and so when you open this, there's a ton of text in this file. I'll be going through some of the different settings to look at, uh, but we'll be using the same file the whole time. So anytime I'm showing the DOS box config and editing things, you'll know it's this file uh, and always saving versions in between that. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll have this auto exec section. And this is where we can write uh, some commands that DOSBox will do automatically every time we start it to make our lives easier. And so I'll paste some of this text in the description of the video, but we want to add first just a mount to add the directory that we have IndyCar Racing 2 in so that you don't have to do this every time you start DOSBox. So what we'll want to do is put mount C, so we'll mount a C drive, and then you want to use the drive that you set up for IndyCar 2. This is a really important step, and hopefully I can highlight this enough because it's something that's troubled a lot of folks uh, over the years. You do not want to mount the direct folder that IndyCar Racing 2 is in. For whatever reason, it doesn't like to launch if you actually mount, uh, if I was to mount the exact IndyCar Racing 2 folder, you want to do the directory above it. So if you have a, a few folders in, uh, you can do whatever folders above it, but make sure you don't actually mount directly to uh, the drive that IndyCar Racing 2 is in, just one of the quirks hopefully save some folks some time uh, and on the second row we'll just do c colon so that'll bring us to the c drive uh, and then we can do cd indycar racing 2. So we'll go ahead and save this. Uh, and what this is gonna do when we start DOSBox is mount our location that we have IndyCar Racing 2 installed in. We can test that real quick. So I save this file and if I go back and start DOSBox now, let me drag over the window you should see some of these commands appear. And if you get any kind of errors, you type that in wrong. I'm gonna put that in the description of the video so you can just copy and paste it into your DOSBox config. But uh, keep in mind, you gotta use the same drive letters and things that your IndyCar 2 is attached to. And you wanna always mount the C drive, but you can use a different drive as to where IndyCar is actually stored. But going back to DOSBox, you can see it mounted my IndyCar Racing 2 directory. And if I do DIR to list the directory, it should show me all the files that are actually in my directory. So now that we've got DOSBox working in the IndyCar Racing 2 directory, uh, we can actually install the IndyCar Racing 2 patch. Very surprisingly, the Sierra help site is still up that has all the patches and everything for the original IndyCar Racing as well as IndyCar 2. I think they actually still have a lot of the different patches for NASCAR and everything. Pretty awesome, they're all still here, but if we scroll down to the IndyCar 2 section, what you want here is gonna differ a little bit depending on what type of, or what version of IndyCar Racing 2 you got. But if you've got the one that I suggested to download, this is the patch you want, the IndyCar Racing 101 to 2 patch. This is gonna add a couple fixes to the game. It's definitely not required to install this, but I, I highly recommend it if you're gonna go through the trouble for this. Uh, and so download this patch here. So once you get this patch downloaded, you can unzip it as well. Uh, and this patch itself will have a couple files in it or a few different files. And what you wanna do actually is take all of these and cut and paste them into the IndyCar Racing 2 directory. So I'll go over to IndyCar 2 and paste them in here. Uh, and you can replace the readme text that's gonna overwrite that. So it's gonna put a little bit of a mess of files here, but it'll clean itself up as well. Uh, the one we're most interested in is this patch EXE. So we can start DOSBox now and we can use DOSBox itself to install a uh, patch, which is kind of fun to do. So we're already in the IndyCar 2 directory because we set up the auto exec. So all we have to write here is patch and hit enter, and that'll start doing a bunch of stuff. And basically you're running the patch as if you're running it in DOS. And this itself is gonna take a little bit of time to go through. You'll see it work through all these other items. Just keep it running. It's actually opening up files and inserting other files. Uh, you're running it on a DOS computer, even if you're in DOS box. So uh, it does take a little bit of time to patch. All right, and once you get to the bottom, uh, you should be good. It might have a couple errors along the way if you never ran the game in the 1.01 uh, patch state, but that's just basically saying we didn't have certain files because they never were generated by the game. So we can hit exit here, and now we actually have a 1.02 patched version of IndyCar Racing 2. So now we're pretty much ready to run the game and we'll wanna make a few more adjustments to the DOSBox config file. So if you open up that file, uh, we're gonna do a bunch of different 
things in here to set up the game and the graphics and make sure it runs the way we want to. So I scrolled all the way to the top. Basically, there's a big file of all of the possible settings in DOSBox, and it's important to consider some of these, uh, both for the graphics, but also for the controls. So if we scroll through, the first things I would highlight is to look at the full resolution or window resolution or both. I always play IndyCar 2 in a window because uh, I stream at the same time and everything. You might use full screen, uh, but either way, you want to set up what you want the resolution to be. I should mention IndyCar 2 only runs at 640 by 480 at the max resolution, but DOSBox features scaling so that we can actually upscale the window itself so that it takes up the full width or uh, height of our screen. And so this is where you can set uh, what you'd want it to be for window resolution, which I'm gonna use, uh, I'll do 1600 by 1200. I've got a 3440 by 1440 screen, so anything smaller than that will work. Uh, for output, we can use a bunch of different output methods. The fastest one that I've found for IndyCar 2 is OpenGLNB, uh, and this is just one of the different methods. Uh, if you are curious what the other ones are, they're listed up here in the file, uh, and you can read about them in documentation online. But OpenGLNB uh, with no buffer is the one that has worked the best for me in the past. To make sure the game runs as fast as possible for priority, we can set this to highest instead of higher uh, and normal for the second. Uh, and this will just ensure we really prioritize DOSBox running and that we get the max frame rate possible. So from there, if we scroll down in the DOSBox section for memory size, uh, you can go up to 64 megabytes with this. You could try to go higher, but I don't think IndyCar 2 would ever use more than 64 megabytes of memory anyway. So uh, this is one of those things you can try playing with, but I don't think it will make the game any faster. So if we keep scrolling down, then get to an interesting section. Uh, for frame skip, we'll keep that on zero, but for aspect, uh, this is where uh, you can try a few different settings. Now I'm gonna keep aspect to false because I'll actually set through the scaler what I want it to be. But if you're gonna run full screen, you most likely wanna set aspect to true so that the game doesn't stretch out. It runs in four by three, so it's gonna be a square. It's, you're gonna have black bars on the left and right side, but you don't really wanna stretch the game out or else uh, you know, you're getting a distorted picture because the game does not use widescreen. So for most of you, I would I'd recommend turning aspect to true. Uh, for myself, I'm gonna keep that at false because I'm gonna run in windowed mode anyway. And then for the scaler, you can have a lot of fun with these. These are different ways to upscale the graphics and none of them actually change the resolution of the game, but they do uh, improve it somewhat by just making the pixels do different things. So you can read into these too. Some of them do some interesting smoothing, um, but to keep that natural DOS look, what I recommend is doing a four times scaler and that should get you decent picture quality. It's just gonna raise every pixel. If it's one pixel, it's actually gonna be four pixels now. So it'll make the whole thing bigger. So if we scroll down now to the CPU section, bunch of settings here. We wanna use the dynamic core, which is the fastest setting. We'll keep auto CPU type. Uh, for cycles, for this game, we'll wanna use max cycles uh, since we want the max frame rate possible. Then for cycles up and down, I usually set these to 5,000 just in case we wanna increase or decrease things. So if we go down to the mixer settings, uh, I would just reduce the block size to 512 and the pre-buffer to 20. And then scroll all the way down to the joystick section. And this is obviously a really important section. So, so you have a few different settings that you can use for joysticks. If you open up your game controllers panel uh, in Windows, I'll pull over mine. This will show you the controllers that you currently have enabled and what they're all set to. And for my setup, I've actually got three different controllers overall. I've got my G25 pedals, I've got my CSL Elite wheelbase, then I have my gear shift. IndyCar Racing 2 doesn't actually support H pattern shifting, even though they would have had that in the real cars, but I don't think H patterns existed for the PC back in 1995. Uh, so we won't use that for this, but I will use my G25 pedals and my uh, CSL Elite with the paddle shifters and everything. So this is two different joysticks. If you just have one joystick, which also contains the pedals um, and, and everything all in one input, then then that's easy enough to set up as well. But that's gonna to correspond to a few different settings here back in our config. So if you have it like me where it's two different controllers, you'll wanna use the two axis option, which supports two different joysticks. Uh, and then the four axis or four axis two only supports one joystick itself, one device 
five, four axes on that. And whether or not you use the regular one or the underscore two depends on if it's your first or second device that's plugged in. So whatever the correct setting is for you, uh, put that into your joystick type. So I'll use two axis. This is one of those settings that uh, is easy to get wrong. And so I would definitely check out the order of your devices. And then if your joystick that you want to use isn't one of the first two, you just have to unplug devices to make sure it is one of the first two else you won't be able to use it. Next down, uh, timed, make sure that's set to true. That enables the precise uh, mode that allows your joystick to have more fine control than it normally would have. So time true, I guess if you're having difficulties with the joysticks and, and the mapping correctly, you can try false, but I think most folks will want true there. Lastly, you want to set the dead zone most likely to zero unless you need a dead zone for some reason, but most of the time you're trying to dial the dead zone out, so we'll set that to zero. So then we get to the bottom of the file again, and we'll want to do one more thing now to the uh, mounting and the auto exec section. We can finally add in the last couple of commands to launch the game. So we'll add our path or our folder that the game is in, IndyCar Racing 2, and then a slash, and then on the last line, uh, the actual command to launch it. So IndyCar, that's the name of the executable. And very, very importantly, you want to put dash H on the end of it. Uh, what that's going to do is launch the game in SVGA mode. There's two modes to run the game. If you don't use the dash H, it'll be a low resolution version of the game. If you add dash H, it tells it to run the high resolution mode, which is still only 640 by 480, but it looks a lot better uh, than the 320 or whatever resolution that the normal runs at. So make sure you save this file. It's a lot of different config options that we want to keep. And if we go back to our folder, we should be able to double click our DOS box executable and finally start the game. I'm Paul Page from Papyrus. This is IndyCar Racing 2. All right, success. I love Paul Page in the intro, but I'll skip it for now. You should be brought right into the calibration page for your joysticks. Uh, if you're not, maybe you didn't have the right joystick selected in the config file, so I'd try a couple of the options. But if you're here, it's where we can set up our joysticks, and hopefully, if you move the wheel, like I'm moving it now, it'll start calibrating it. So for me, the first one is always the wheel. I think it's gonna depend on the order of your devices, but you should move the wheel to the extent. I should mention for IndyCar 2, you definitely have to use a limited degrees of rotation on your wheel. For my Fanatec, I set it actually to 200 degrees, which is very, very low, but the game itself was made at a time when steering wheels did not have a lot of rotation. So you absolutely don't want to use 900 degrees of rotation uh, or anything like that. I think you can maybe get away from 360 or less. I like 200, so it's nice and twitchy. I don't have to change the uh, steering ratios too much in the setup, but it's something you want to play with. And every time you change your wheels rotation settings, you do want to actually come in and calibrate again. Uh, but my first joystick is my wheel, so I move that left and right, and I can hit enter. Then it brings you to the second joystick, which for me is the pedals. So I'll depress and release my throttle pedal, uh, and then I'll do the same to the brake. And then hit enter. So that sets up your throttle, brake, and steering. You do also need to set up a few other commands though. So if we come over to options, and you gotta use the arrow keys to navigate in IndyCar 2, because it is a DOS game, so no mouse support. Uh, but we'll go to options, hit enter. So we'll go to controls. One thing you wanna make sure is that you make sure it's on linear steering. If you're using a wheel, uh, you absolutely want the steering to be linear. Non-linear would mean that it's more of a button type steering. So definitely want linear so that the controls are nice and smooth. If you need to recalibrate your joysticks, you can use these calibration options to do that again. Uh, and if we go to set controls, we can actually see all the rest of the controls and what they're set to. So we've got our steering, uh, and you will want to come in and, and click this and make sure you steer to the left and then the right so that it sets it to the right joystick. Acceleration, do the same, and braking, do the same. So I'm clicking those and then just pressing the pedal or steering the wheel that I want. So that's got my steering, acceleration, and braking set up. Then I have your shifting keys. Now for myself, if I click shift up and then try to click the button on my wheel, uh, which hopefully you can hear, it doesn't actually do anything. And that's because IndyCar 2 is only set up to recognize a few different uh, control commands. So what I usually do is set shift up to Z, uh, shift down to X, and reverse to the letter C. So you can see I've set them to keyboard commands. Uh, and this will let us actually use another feature of DOSBox to set up our wheel to actually use those different keyboard commands. So if you hold on the keyboard control 
and then F1. So it opened up this little keyboard window, which is where we can set up some additional mappings uh, to map our joystick to different commands. So we've got a virtual keyboard here. And if you click something like the letter Z, which we set to the shift up, and then at the bottom you click add, we can press the control that we wanna use that button. So we've got it set to uh, button four on my wheelbase, which is my shift up paddle. Do the same for the X, go to X, click add, then shift down, get that set to button five. And then it's up to you how you wanna hit reverse. You can't actually shift into reverse. It's a key that you would press down. So you can set it to another button on your wheel if you happen to need to reverse. So there are some other commands in IndyCar 2 which are useful to set as well. They're not explicitly called out as something remappable, but I've got a version of the manual here. And if I flip over, uh, you firstly have to increase or decrease your boost, which is set to the L and K key. So you can do the same thing that we were just doing with the shifting keys uh, and in the control F1 menu inside a DOS box, map something on your wheel or anywhere really to the increase and decrease boost L and K keys. Uh, you also have your roll bar keys, so you can change roll bar on the fly. So plus and minus for the front and uh, brackets for the rear roll bars. And I usually set those to some buttons on my wheel as well. And then you've got your brake bias, which is two other keys to move forward and backward the brake bias. So those are all commands that are really useful to set to the wheel as well. You've also got things like the D key, which will change the display on the car uh, and the F keys as well to change through the different driver menus and the pit menus and all that. So there's a lot of different keyboard commands. I definitely recommend just Googling Indy car racing to manual uh, and sift through it if you're really interested but certainly the boost command especially recommend mapping that to your steering wheel so once you're done setting controls here you can click save and then exit and that should bring you back to the game so we'll go done to exit the menu here and click done again. And so now I'd recommend looking into the realism menu just to make sure things are set how you want them. Uh, this is where you control the race length and whether or not you have car damage. Put that on realistic for now. I usually run arcade in my season just so I can hit the walls a little bit. Uh, but you can turn on breakdowns, yellow flags, pace laps, all that stuff. We'll click done there. In the opponents menu, this is where you can control how many different opponents and how strong they are. Uh, so 31 is the default. We can increase the strength. I usually run on around 95% to 99% depending on the car set that I'm using. Uh, for drawing, for the default car set, you should be able to crank this all the way for both directions without any issue. But these are one of those settings that you may need to reduce if you're running a complex car set. Uh, and for herd, you can increase this from three, but I've always found three to be fine. Under driving aids, uh, this is where we can turn on or off automatic shifting, which will want off, uh, braking help, manual braking, and spin recovery, which is defaulted to none. Um, you can use these to start shifting an IndyCar 2 is a trick. You'll probably blow, blow your engine a few times. So, so no shame in using automated shifting or braking to start out. Uh, but if you want to go full sim, this is what I usually run. We jump down to the graphics panel then. Uh, usually want to set all of these to on. Auto will automatically turn off some of the settings if uh, the, the FPS dips below a specified number. I've found with, with this, it actually can make the frame rate a bit choppy because it's trying to decide whether or not it should keep something on. So if you turn all those settings on, uh, then you don't really have to worry about the frame rate at the bottom. But this is where you could set a minimum and maximum frame rate for the different graphics options to turn on or off. You can play with that if you want. I run with all of them on. And lastly, in the sound menu, uh, there's nothing really in here that I usually touch, but you can play with the different volumes if anything is too loud or too quiet. So if we back out of the options menu, I think we're finally ready to uh, drive for a second, make sure everything works. So we can go to single race mode and you can pick your track that you wanna race on. I'll go to Loudon since it's my home track jump in here, uh, go through all this in my playthrough, so I won't talk about it too much, but you do got your garage settings where you can load or save setups, change all the different settings, which you'll definitely want to play around with. Uh, you can progress through the different sessions here uh, and we can go to practice. So we're in the car and I think it's important just to make sure the steering works, uh, to make sure the throttle and brake work and any other keys you have set up, but we can come out of the pits. So if you just want to drive IndyCar 2, I know we're probably pretty deep into the video at this point, but that's all you really have to do. Uh, and at this point, you can race with the default cars on the default track and have yourself a ton of fun. Go run the 1995 season. But uh, there are some things that just aren't here by default in IndyCar 2. And so I do want to go through some of the setup and how you would maybe install some mods to enhance the 1995 kart season uh, and maybe make it a little more realistic and fun.
Oh, and one thing I should say while I'm cruising around New Hampshire here is uh, there is no force feedback in IndyCar 2. So if you're looking for settings about how that would work, uh, you're going to have to keep looking. Force feedback wasn't really a thing yet in games, especially commercially available games. So you'd have to wait till Grand Prix Legends came out about three years later to have any kind of force feedback in a game. It takes a little bit to get used to. It's definitely not uh, anything like a modern sim, but you will find if you get used to it, get your steering and everything set up correctly, that it's actually quite drivable. So now that we've got IndyCar 2 configured, we can install some of the awesome car sets and track mods. Uh, this game has 25 years of different modifications for it, and a lot of the great ones are at IndyCarRacing2.net, which I've already mentioned, it's really the online community home for IndyCar 2 these days. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here, highly recommend checking out the forum, but if you wanna download some of the cars and the tracks and everything, we can go to the archives. Now I'll go through in this installing a car set and tr uh, one track just to show you how that process works. Um, important to note, cars in IndyCar 2 are arranged into something called a car set. So it's not really easy or possible to have a single car like you would in the NASCAR racing games. They're always bundled together into a set of cars. So if we go to the car sets menu, this is where all the different car sets uh, for IndyCar 2 or a lot of them have been centralized. You can see here, we've pretty much got every kart season from the late 80s all the way to modern day essentially there exists a lot of different stuff in here there's a couple important things to note with car sets and that's the car shape that they use uh, people figured out a long time ago how to modify the shape of the cars to make them more accurate but there's two main groups of car sets you've got car sets done on the original car shape so they're gonna look like the default cars uh, not super accurate but definitely easier to run on an older computer or a computer using DOSBox. So these are basically painted with the uh, default paint shop and everything. And you can download a bunch of different car sets that are all done on the original car shape. Uh, if we scroll down, there's been a lot of different car shapes though made over the years. Uh, two of the main ones being the Kart 2K shape and the Reynard car shape. Uh, these are all excellent. And if you want the more accurate detailed car shape and car sets, you'll want the ones uh, in these sections themselves. I especially like the Reynard car shape uh, that was done. A lot more polygons, uh, a lot more detail, makes it look a lot more accurate even in the low resolution that IndyCar Racing 2 is. But greatest thing is you can actually try out as many of these as you want. For the sake of this video and getting the game up and running with the 1995 season, figured I'd pick probably the best car set or one of the best ones for 1995, which in my opinion is this Lola 1995 car set done by Oliver Carulla. Uh, definitely recommend any of their car sets, but this one especially is quite good, so we'll download this. So once you have that downloaded, usually you have to unzip it uh, if it comes in a zipped file, so I'll do that real quick. Uh, and the car, sh car sets are really easy. They're just a folder uh, which has a name, and if we click in it, we should see a bunch of different files. Most important thing is to make sure whatever the .dat, the .dat file, whatever that's called, matches the name of the folder. Uh, as long as that's the case, then everything will work out well. So if we back out, what I can do is uh, cut the Lola 1995 folder, which is our car set, and if we go to the directory we installed IndyCar 2 in, you'll see here the cars folder. So if I select that, I can just paste my Lola 1995 folder here, and that car set's essentially installed. So once you're back into the game, if you go down to driver info, this is where you can see all the different drivers and everything that are installed. It's also where you can switch car sets. So if we go to the car sets option, click enter, uh, we should see all the different installed car sets here and we have our Lola 1995 set. So if I hit enter, now I'm brought uh, to my Lola set. If I click on opponents, I can cycle through all the different drivers, but you can see the detail in this compared to the default car set. So it's a great way to race whatever season you want. It's how I've been racing in the 1989 season. Every car set itself can have its own driver ratings, its own uh, obviously set of drivers and paid schemes and car shapes and everything. So uh, for somebody that loves IndyCar, it's kind of fun just to click through and see all the different drivers themselves, but definitely recommend grabbing whatever season car set you fancy and having fun with it. 
So now that we've gone through installing a car set, I also want to show you how to install a track and make sure it runs in a season and everything. So if we go uh, back to the archive on IndyCarRacing2.net, we do have a tracks section for all the different tracks that exist. Uh, and they're broken apart. They're actually recently reorganized, so it's awesome. We've got road courses, street courses, paved ovals, and dirt ovals, actually, if you want to go sprint car racing. But for this install guide, I figured I'd install Indianapolis since it's one I know a lot of folks would want to race on. So if we go to the paved oval section uh, and scroll down, you can see there's a lot of tracks in here, a lot of awesome conversions, as well as scratch built stuff. Uh, and there's several different versions, if I can find them here, of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You've got the IndyCar Racing 1 version that's converted to IndyCar 2. You've got the NASCAR 3 version, which was converted. You've got a scratch built 1992 version that has the big apron, as well as a scratch built 1995 version with the warm up lanes, uh, and then a later 2000 version with the Accurate Pagoda. Uh, Pavel 69 has made a lot of these, and so they're, they're excellent versions of the track. For this video, since we're going with the 1995 season, I will install the 1995 track, but all of these tracks, whether or not they're the road courses or the ovals, generally all work the same. So we'll download this one. So once you download it, similar to the car set, we have just a zip folder. So we'll unzip that IMS 95 here. I'm going to click in. Uh, it should just be a folder, and then you should see a bunch of files, which are the, all the different lap files for the AI, the different setup files for your cars, as well as another DAT file. And you want to make sure uh, whatever this is called, in this case, IMS95.DAT, matches the folder name. Uh, so if we come back out, I can actually cut that folder, and we'll go to our IndyCar Racing 2 directory. And in the tracks directory, we can just paste this file. So you want it to be called whatever the DAT file was called and inside should just be all those loose files. Uh, and as long as it's organized like that, it should work. And if all you wanna do is just go out and drive on that track or do a quick race on it, that's all you have to do. It should show up in the game. But if you do want it to be in your season calendar, there's one other file that you need to edit. And in the main IndyCar Racing 2 directory, you should see this calendar file, and it's a little auspicious. It doesn't have a file extension at all, uh, but what you should be able to do is open this with a notepad editor, like we've been doing. And when you open it, you should see a list of different tracks, and these each correspond to the different folders that are in the tracks directory, as well as some other settings. And basically is your season calendar. The, the calendar of races, if you run a championship, will we'll go through each of these one at a time. So if we wanna add Indianapolis to this list, Indy in 1995 would have been right after Nazareth. So we can enter a new row here, uh, and it's gonna be in May. I believe it was run on the 28th of that year. Uh, these next two rows should just be zero for each of those, or these next two digits should just be zero. Then we'll want to put whatever the folder is called, in this case, IMS95, if I can type, and then we'll put the year, 1995. So these are all the different settings uh, that you want to put in for any track that you want to insert or remove from the calendar. And so you can download all the different tracks you want, uh, create the calendar in any order that you want. And as long as the dates and track folders are all entered, when you go to run a championship, they should all be there. So I'll save this file. So back in IndyCar 2, if I go to my championship season and say I want to start a new season here, uh, to confirm that it all worked, we should see it there in the list. You can see fifth down is Indianapolis. So that easy to edit the calendar, add different tracks in, a little bit of text editing, but nothing crazy. Uh, if I back out of this and go to single race mode, we'll also have Indianapolis here so we can go out and do a race around it. So rocketing down the front straightaway at Indy, um, not too hard, I think, to install the tracks, just copying of some files. You don't even have to do the editing of the calendar unless you want it to show up in the championship. But I have a ton of fun just installing different car sets, different tracks. It's really easy to go from racing uh, a kart race in the late 90s to one of the first IRL races to one of the early kart races of the 1990s uh, all in an afternoon. There's also Formula One car sets if you want to do that kind of thing. Uh, but it's all one set of physics, it's all uh, one basic game, just a lot of visual changes, but a lot of fun to be had, and I spent many, many years and time just playing around with all this great stuff that exists. So 
So I hope some of you are able to follow that and get the game running. I'm sure there'll be some questions or, like I said at the very beginning, some of this won't work exactly the same on everybody's computer. But if I can help out at least a few of you get it running and enjoy the old sim, then it was all worth it. So thanks for watching. Uh, just post any comments that you have, any questions. I'll try to get to them or I'm sure some of the other very talented folks in the IndyCar 2 community will as well. But thank you for watching. I'll see you all again next time.